One question that is sometimes asked is if it is correct to refer to a cruise ship as an ocean liner. The simple answer is no. Cruise ships and ocean liners are different, although there is a bit of a grey area in the middle, and the most important difference is in how the ship is used. And by the way, they are both ships, not boats. A ship is larger than a boat. Lifeboats are boats. The cruise ship that carries them is a ship. Remember the old saying, a boat can fit into a ship, a ship cannot fit into a boat. Ocean liners and cruise ships are both ships intended to carry passengers in comfort. But the difference is that an ocean liner is primarily a way of getting from port A to port B. They are transport. They fill the same role that modern passenger aeroplanes do today. A cruise ship usually sails in a loop and returns its passengers to the same port that the cruise started from. A cruise ship is not intended to get you anywhere. It's a floating resort. You go on a cruise ship to enjoy the facilities. There is a saying in the cruise ship industry, the ship is the destination. Here is a picture of a typical cruise ship itinerary. There are ports, but the only reason to stop at the ports is for the passengers to stretch their legs and go sightseeing. The ultimate is a cruise to nowhere where the ship does not even stop at any ports, but simply cruises at sea for a few days and then returns to its original port. There is currently only one true ocean liner in the world, Cunard's Queen Mary II. Here is a typical Queen Mary II itinerary. You get on in Southampton, and you get off in New York. Just to confuse things, ocean liners and cruise ships also have a lot in common. Both carry passengers in a degree of luxury. Both will offer entertainment, they will have multiple restaurants to dine in, bars and all the mod cons that you can expect from an upmarket hotel. Of course, people have been using seagoing transport to get places since ancient times. But the real heyday of the ocean liner was from the middle of the 19th century, when powered ships began to replace sail, up until the decade after the Second World War, when aviation became faster, cheaper and more available than sea travel. Basically, planes killed the ocean liner. Now here's an interesting thought. Have passenger ships become faster in the last hundred years? The answer has to be no. In fact, cruise ships of today are significantly slower than ocean liners of the past. Titanic, for one example, cruised at 21 knots and had a maximum speed of 23. That was in 1912, over a hundred years ago. Over the next few decades, especially during the period between the wars, ships simply became faster. The blue riband was a prize that went to the ship that managed the fastest transatlantic crossing for that year. Cunard and White Star lines were the most frequent winners, but the German line Nord Deutsche also won four times. The fastest ocean liner, according to the blue list of blue riband winners, was the United States setting a record in 1952 of 34 and a half knots. The current and only true ocean liner, Queen Mary II, can sail at 30 knots. What speed do cruise ships manage? The largest cruise ship in the world, Symphony of the Seas, cruises at 22 knots, and most cruise ships are in a similar speed bracket. In fact, one reason why only a few ocean liners survived to be repurposed as cruise ships is exactly that point, their speed. Travelling quickly at sea means high-powered engines which consume a lot of fuel, and ocean liners typically are far less fuel efficient than cruise ships. So yes, cruise ships and ocean liners serve different purposes. One offers a holiday at sea, the other offers you a convenient passage across the ocean. And true ocean liners these days 
are almost a historical curiosity.